wild like my daddy, but straightforward like my mama. Drink like granddad, smoke sluggies like the other. But granddad feels the guts. Hustle like my uncle JT, a cousin Big B. I got big dreams like Jimmy Lee. And my aim is feeling like Billy Beans. Keep a job like Uncle Kevin told me. Top notch player like Debbie. And that caddy thing since the 80s. Snap and corporate thug and political like Jack. Baby, rest in peace, but I've been on the lot. See, it's hot here, but the skin to get money. No need to be deceived. And you play me like I'm a pawn in the game. Chess, jokes, but like Big Kenny and Ski. Like to rail, jerk. The trigger happy is it about my family. You're lonely like my granny. You're loser. Chuckling, giggling, hunting my shoulders like my daddy's and the lead. Brouted like them types of seeds. The spiritual like the wars of go get her like Ariana. Religious, romantic, color like no one you know ever. Oh, so like Uno. My soldiers, I told stories like my bro, Deep Bird. And cousin Ray Knock, I get aimed like Bird. And free man, like John and Jane. I can beat man, it's respectful. Tattoo, a different breed. I can't, I can't wait, wait till they, they get, get a load of me. Drake did love to read. Memory and lessons from the sexual period. Flex family. We are unapologetic. Hey, the red red mentality. We are unapologetic. Hey, the red red mentality. I can't wait. Right on. Hey, champions, welcome to tonight's edition of the Motivation to Elevation Facebook Live podcast. It's yours truly, Arian Tyson. I am sitting in my office here in St. Louis, and it is a privilege and honor to be back before you on a cold Tuesday night here in the STL. And I will actually not be before you that long. It has been a very eventful day. But after the announcement that I made Sunday, I had to do a podcast. I had to do one. For those who did not see, for those who might have been under a rock, for those who are unaware, I did a, a special Facebook Live Sunday to announce that the wait is over. And so this book right here, my book, is available. It's finally here. This is the this is the icing on the cake for me for 2017. It has been a phenomenal, phenomenal year. And to be able to call myself an author, to be able to hold something that I wrote something that I put my heart into in my hand to share with the world, to share with those who are willing to read, to who are willing to learn from it, to share my experiences and be as authentic and transparent and unapologetic about what I've gone through to get to becoming the person that I am now. It I can't even really put into words. So it is available. The first, actually, the first shipment of books are going is going out. They're going to come here first. <laughs> it's come is going out tomorrow, and for those that have pre-ordered, when they arrive, I'm actually going to. I'm actually going to sign each and every book and provide a personal message. And I actually want to shout out my godmother and my auntie who's actually watching. And I know she's not feeling the best, but I want to shout her out because she literally was the very first person to pre-order this book. And for those who don't know, the name of the book is entitled Love Me or Hate Me, My Journey from Motivation to Elevation. It is here. You can order it. And I'm actually, I can actually announce this now. I will be doing a book signing here in St. Louis. It's tentatively scheduled for Saturday, January the 13th. I will provide the, the location and the time, you know, as we, as we, you know, finalize everything. But 
but to just say that I'm excited and to say that, you know, to say that I'm just really at a loss for words, but it's just surreal to me, but I, I can look at it and just hold it in my hand and just know that, you know, this is real. This is not just something that I, you know, I thought about and just thought about and thought about. It's I got it out of my head and got it on paper. And now it's available for everybody to see. So, I, I you know, auntie, I hope that you that you feel better. I haven't been feeling the best either. I'm still not 100 percent. But again, I, I tell people all the time, you can make moves or you can make excuses, but you can't do both. So here I am. And I appreciate you um, hopping on, even though you're not feeling the best, because it's a lot of people I know right now that that is not feeling well. You know, it's obviously something going going on, something going around. It's just really that time of year where a lot of people are getting sick. Um, so I'm definitely a praying for your healing. And for anyone else that's watching that is not feeling the best, you know, I'm definitely praying for your strength to return. I won't be before you long, but I want to really use this podcast to sum up what 2017 has been. And I want to encourage you today to keep proving them wrong. That's the topic. Keep proving them wrong. And what I mean by what I mean by that is. I'm talking about those that say they support you. It's one thing for someone to support you verbally, but you really find out when people support you when it comes to them being willing to spend money with you. And I know that that's something that we struggle with in the African-American community because we always talk about, you know, how we support, we should, we should support, you know, black owned businesses and this, that, and the other. It's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to really put your money where your mouth is, especially when it comes to a situation where you are someone who has broke bread with people who has invested in people and you have a proven track record. But then when, when, when the role is reversed and you are the, you are the person who is the producer and not the consumer. And it's amazing how you hear crickets all of a sudden. And that's, that's always seemed to bother me, but I was having a conversation with a fellow entrepreneur friend of mine Earlier this year, and I told them that I, t I had an idea and I told them of some of the things that I wanted to accomplish. And looking back on it now, I can actually say that I accomplished those things. One of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to launch a clothing store, an apparel store. And I did that this summer where when I would do videos, I could actually be wearing my own merchandise because I've seen those that I admire do the same thing. So they all, you know, we always say, if you're going to copy, if you're going to cop, be a copycat, copy the right cat. And so, you know, not reinventing the wheel, so to speak, I decided to do that. And, you know, there have been a lot of people that have, you know, been able to support that and be able to, and, and I appreciate them for that. And, and, and yes, Auntie, you're right, spoke that into existence. You know, it didn't happen overnight, but it happened because I made a decision. And then I had a, had a conversation with that same person after some things happened to me back in February that really just angered me. And so what I told them was, I said, if I was to ever write a book, I would entitle it blah, blah, blah. And to be able to look at it, look at it now and hold it in my hand and say, yeah, I, I did what I said I was going to do. People respect people that do what they say that they're going to do. So going into 2018, I want you to think about something. I want you to ask yourself, 
What are some things that you want to do? Because if you want to do certain things, if you want to get to the next level, if you want to elevate and, and you want some things to happen to you that, that has never happened to you before, that you've only thought about in your dreams, that means that you're going to have to do some things differently in 2018 that you did in 2017 and years past. So what I did was even, you know, going back to the, you know, going back to this book, which is available at, at www.loveme.hateme.org. And yes, I'm going to shamelessly plug it because it's my book and it's something I'm very proud of and I'm unapologetic about it. The thing about it is this. When it came to me writing this book, because this is a prime example. It took me 18 years to write this book. I stayed in fear for 18 years of writing a book. I was 16 years old. I'll be 35 in February. I was 16 when someone told me that I would, that I needed to write a book because at that time I was writing poetry. Poetry was helping me get my feelings out. And that's what a lot of people don't know that th this is where it started for me because I had a, a hard time, believe it or not, articulating and elocuting myself. And so one thing that my great grandmother Miss Willie Ann Ward told me, she told me before she died, I was, I was six years old when she passed away. She told me, and I never forgot this, and I talk about it in the book. She told me that if you're struggling to get your feelings out verbally, write them down. And so she's the person that encouraged me to write, just like my aunt who's watching is the is the one who encouraged me to sing. And so when people drop a seed in you or sow a seed in you, you don't forget that. You really don't forget that because on those days where you feel like you have no support or you feel like nobody's there to encourage you, or nobody understands, think back on those people who spoke life into you. And so when, when, when people think about me, I want people to realize, I want people to say about me that I poured into them. <clears throat> I poured into them. And that... Regardless of what their situation was at the time, that when they came around me, they knew that they were going to leave better than they came or that their spirit would have been lifted after having an interaction with me or having a conversation with me because it's easy to tear somebody down and tell them what they're doing wrong. It's easy to point that out because nobody does everything right all the time. But as I've always said, if you're bold enough to tear somebody down, be bold enough to build them back up. And so even while I may critique people from time to time and give them, you know, constructive criticism it's to get it's to help them become better. Because that's the same thing that people did to me. And I realized that people, a lot of people can't, can't take criticism because they're so, because they're so, so used to people telling them what they want to hear in, instead of telling them what they need to hear. And even now, as I think about it, when I think about that conversation that I had with my great grandmother as a as a child that has been my tackling fuel that has that has lit a spark in me and then when i think of all the things that i've ha that that have happened to me over the last 2 years this week i made the announcement sunday about the book yesterday was 2 years to the day that i lost a cousin of mine, her name was Diamond. 
18 years old to cancer two years ago yesterday. The significance of that was that it started a chain reaction of deaths back to back to back to back to back in my, you know, family members, friends that I went to went to high school with gone. Cousins died of cancer. Cousins died from car accidents. People who who sold into me, the, the person who gave who who blessed me with my ministerial license died it within this within this time span. And the thing about it is this. I went to a dozen funerals from December 2015 to June of 2016. But yet, I was still shooting motivational videos. I was still making inspirational posts. Even in the midst of all of that. And yes, I had those struggles. I had those, those moments where... You know, I just didn't feel like doing it because I just wasn't into it. But then I thought about something that a mentor of mine told me. People are waiting to hear your voice. And when people find out all the stuff that you went through and they look back and they can they can they'll say, how is it that you were able to? To do this, 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 and this. In the midst of everything that you went through. This is how. You'll find out how in here. Because I talk about it. And I get, ve I get very deep with it. I get very deep with it. The stuff that I went through. And people that are close to me. People that know me by blood. They know what I'm talking about. They know what I talk about it in here. I talk about it. So if you want to know, make sure you get a copy of it. Because it's going to be a blessing to you. Because you're going to be able to look back and say, if he can do it, why can't, why can't I do it? There are people that believe that those dreams that you have, that you have talked about personally, talked about privately to certain people or those dreams that are in your mind, there are actually people that believe that you can't accomplish what you want to accomplish. My challenge to you is prove them wrong. Doctors told me I was going to end up mentally retarded. Because I, I because I was diagnosed with lead poisoning at an early age. This is my way of proving them wrong. Talking to you like I'm talking to you now is my way of proving them wrong. Those that walked out, those that abandoned me, those that betrayed me, whether I knew them personally, whether I knew them for two years, whether I knew them for 20 years, etc., this is my way of proving them wrong. Those that I've invested into, those that I've sown a seed into, and those that are sitting back watching all of these things happen, all of those things that I talked about that I was going to do come to fruition, and they're sitting back not doing anything, but maybe talking about me behind closed doors. I'm going to continue to prove them wrong, whether they sow a seed or not. All it's doing is fueling my fire. That's all it's doing is motivating me because pain actually motivates me. If you have not figured it out, pain motivates me. Pain for most people causes them to, causes them to fold up. For me, it causes me to keep climbing. Oh, what? <laughs> well, I just said, just took the words right out of my mouth. It causes me to keep 
grinding. It causes me to keep pushing forward. Because I think about those promises and those and those blessings that God has stored up for me. That, that God wants to bless me with. But it's going to require me to get out of my own way. It's going to require me to do something that's bigger than me. In order for those blessings to, to start showering down. And, and for those that are close to me. That, are, that, are, that have locked arms with me. To be blessed with the over, by the overflow. That's what's going to happen. But in order for you to get that, in order for you to get to that place, you're going to have to keep proving your detractors wrong. You're going to have to keep proving your naysayers wrong. You're going to have to keep proving your haters wrong. You're going to have to keep proving the snakes in your life wrong. You're going to have to keep proving those people who smile in your face and talk about you behind your back. You're going to have to keep proving them wrong. Because actions speak louder than words. Words do speak, but actions speak louder. Don't get it twisted. Words are important. Words can words can 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 pour into you, or words can hurt you. I grew up hearing the whole thing. You you heard the adage: "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt you." That's a lie. That's a bold faced lie. It was a lie then, it was a lie, it's a lie now. It was garbage then to me, it's garbage now to me. And the fact is, I think about and and, and <laughs> to show you that words have power. Because God has told you to do something. And I don't know who I'm ministering to, because I don't like. When people call me a preacher, I don't. I don't. I just don't. But I don't know who I'm ministering to tonight. But but I want to think, I want you to think about this. And this is something that I had a recent conversation with um, with my pastor about. Because we talk about this all the time. There's a story, familiar story, in the Bible about Moses and you know, in the story how, you know, Moses didn't enter the promised land. He didn't enter it. But here's the problem. God told him to speak to the rock. He told him to speak to the rock. But if you're familiar with the story, Moses didn't do that. The reason that he was not able to enter the promised land is because he, he didn't do what God told him to do. God simply told him to speak to the rock. Well, what did he do? He hit the rock with the, with, with the staff. He hit the rock. And because of his disobedience, he was not able to enter the promised land. Okay? What is the significance of that? Your voice has power. You have to speak life into the things that you want. You have to get to a place in space where if you want things to change to turn around, it takes a confession. It takes it takes a thought and then it takes a confession by your mouth and then it takes action behind it. I've heard it said this way, watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words for they become actions. Words normally, whether you say it verbally out of your mouth or whether you say it subconsciously, actions follow your words. So in order for you to prove people wrong, you got to start speaking over yourself. And if you don't know how to speak positivity over yourself, you got to get around people that's going to be willing to speak life into you and realize that everybody does not have a hidden agenda. There are actually people that want to see you win. There are actually people that want to see you succeed. 
The very reason that I'm here right now is because I have people in my life that spoke life into me. I didn't get here overnight. I didn't just wake up one day and decide that I wanted to shoot a thousand videos in less than four years, which I've done. And I'm not I'm not bragging. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying it because it's a fact. And, and I'm someone that used to be petrified to stand in front of people. But I've stood in front of hundreds of people. And the day is going to come where I stand in front of thousands of people. Because I'm because I had that spoken into me. And I had it spoken into me. Four years ago in 2013 from someone who is no longer here in the physical that I would be speaking on stage. Well, guess what? I did that. I spoke on a stage in 2017. What are you going to do in 2018 to ensure yourself that 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 2018 is not a repeat of 2017 if you had a rough 2017? And even if you had a, a great 2017, what are you going to do in 2018 to, to have a curtain call to either meet or exceed what you did in 2017? Because what I'm going to do, what I set out to do for 2018, my goals are already written out. My, the vision has already been cast. I, I walk in my office and I can look at my wall and I have all of the things that I want to accomplish in 2018 written down. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. And, the, and I save the biggest goal, the biggest thing that I want to accomplish, I saved it for the very end of the year. And the wheels are already in motion where I'm going to travel to to. The plate to the one place that I want to travel to that means the most to me. And I'm not going to, I don't even have to say what it is because if you know my story, if you know the place that is near and dear to me, because it is the, it will fulfill my father's last wish that he never saw alive, that he never lived to see, then you already know what it is. Guess what? It's going to happen in 2018. And I'm saying it and I'm and I'm standing on it. I will touch that soil. And those that have already said that they're going, we will touch that soil in 2018. It's going to happen. My I just said what's what it is. If if you're watching live, and you're looking at the comments. She just said what it is. It's going to happen. The wheels are already in motion. This is bigger than me. But this is something that I want to do. And if I can do it, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? You have what it takes in, in you to get everything to accomplish everything that you want to do. You have it in you. But once you start speaking it, resources are going to come left and right because the because things are going to line up. And those that have seen your due diligence, those that have seen you be consistent, those that have seen you pour into people, those that have seen you struggle. They're going to be willing to invest in you knowing that. They're going to get a return on their investment because when you invest in people and you do it from the heart, it's going to come back to you tenfold, hundredfold. And this is something that I pointed out to my past and I'm going to wrap this up. We often talk about, we know the story of Job and how, how everything was stripped from Job. Everything was stripped from Joe. He lost. He basically lost everything. Friends turned on him, etc. You know, his, his wife thought something was wrong with him, so on and so forth. And even he became discouraged, but he never lost faith. And because he never lost faith, he 
got back double for his trouble. But here's the thing. Here's something I pointed out to my past that I wanted you to think about this. We serve a God that is, is rich, is wealthy. And believers, we say that. Job was blessed with double for his trouble. And one thing that I pointed out to my pastor for this is this. God has the ability to bless us with more than double. And what I take from that whole story of Job is that if, if you had something stolen from you, something lost, by default... If you do, if you're obedient to the will of God, by, by default, at minimum, you're going to get double for your trouble. That's just like, for example, if you lost $7,500 and you're doing this and you're doing this and you're doing this and you're being obedient and you're faithful, so on and so forth, that means that by default, you're going to be blessed double. So that means you're going to be blessed with at minimum 15 grand. At minimum. But the same guy that blessed you with 15 grand, you think he can't bless you with 45 grand? Or he can't bless you with six figures? See, I hope you get where I'm going. Because the fact is, you can't put that, don't put that limit on God. Don't put a limit on him. Because even when people put limits on you, even when you make the mistake of arguing for your own limitations, you are robbing yourself of being blessed abundantly. And remember, he came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Abundantly may not necessarily mean double. He can bless you triple. He can bless you 10 times. He can bless you 100 times. Because think about this. If you had 10 and he blessed you with 20, that means he gave you double. But, that, but, but with that same 10, that 10 can grow to 100. That means you've been blessed 10 times. It can go to 1,000. That means you've been blessed 100 times over. So... When you hear someone say he'll give you double for your trouble, yeah, he can, but that's the bare minimum. That means he can give you, but he can give you more than that. But it's going to require you to do some things. It's going to require you to get hungry. It's going to require you to get out of your own way. It's going to require you to think back on those people that have said that you're not going to amount to anything, that, that you're not going to succeed, that you're going to fail, that you're going to fall flat on your face because everybody that says they love you is not supporting you. Everybody that calls you family is not supporting you. They are rooting for you to fail. Some people are rooting for you to win. Other people are rooting for you to fail. And when you step out on faith and do something that is yours and, and produce something that is yours, you really get to see who is pretending and who really is for you. And I'm telling you what I know, because with the launch of this book, with this book finally being here, this is what it's going to show me. Because I know who I've poured into. I know who I've sown the seed into. Emotionally, physically, whether it's through my time, whether it's through my, my whether it's through my money. You're going to find out. So think about. What think about what you know that you need to be doing because there are people who you're assigned to, and you wasted enough time, you wasted enough time waiting on the perfect time. You've wa wasted enough time waiting on those that say they love you to support you. How many more excuses are you going to use? You're waiting for, you know, you've been saying for the last couple of years that, you know, next year is going to be my year. 
2018 has the ability to really be your year. It really has the ability to be your year, but it's going to require you to to do some things that's going to that that may make you comfortable, uncomfortable. And what one of those things is you're going to have to prove people wrong. You're going to have to prove people wrong. You're going to have to prove those negative voices that are in your head wrong. You're going to have to prove those who who laugh at you who talk about you behind your back, prove them wrong. Because there, because every one of us has people in our, especially on Facebook, they have people that they just love to be nosy. Like, for example, I put a post out today, and I got a bunch of messages I got I to gotta respond back to, where I told them to comment, for more information and I had people comment and I reached and I reached out to them and you know on Facebook you can literally see when somebody read your comment on your your inbox message no response no I'm not interested in nothing and I'm sure that that has happened to you also But let me encourage you, don't allow that to get you discouraged. Anything worth having is hard work. Nobody said it's going to be easy, but it is going to be worth it. And even though it might seem like it's impossible, trust me, it's possible. I thought writing a book was going to be impossible for me. I wrote this book in less than 60 days. That is a fact. I wrote it in something that I waited 18 years, something that I procrastinated with for 18 years. I wrote in less than two months. And believe it or not, I wrote it as a as a significant chapter in my life was ending. If you know me personally, you know what I'm talking about. I literally was writing this book. While I was waiting for a process to end. Don't tell me what's not possible. If people think it's impossible. Think that your goals and what you want to accomplish is is impossible. Use that as motivation to prove them wrong. The proof is in the pudding. I'm a living witness to it. And if I can do it, I'm no different than you. I just believed enough in my dreams to put it out there and feel like somebody is going to be blessed with my story from hearing my story and hearing my struggles and hearing my triumphs. With that being said, I want to wrap this up. I went a little longer than I thought I would. But, you know, once you get into it, you get into it. But I want to thank you, thank each and every last one of you all who have hopped on. Again, my brand new book is here. It's finally here. Something that I said I wanted to do in February. Finally, it is here. I'm I'm proud of it. It's, it's a, you know, this project, I was proud of it. And, you know, I got big things on the horizon in 2018. You know, who knows? It might be a second book on the way. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Because I know that doors are going to open up from this book. And doors can open up from the dreams that you have still in you. It's time for you to let them out. Stop being selfish. It's time to let them out. Because the world is waiting. Those that are, there are people that have gone through what you have gone through or going through what you have gone through. You are being selfish holding it all in. You're being selfish holding it all in. It's time for you to let it out. And it's time for you to be the beacon of light that you have been called to be. Make the decision. Again, for those who have invested in me, thank you so much. If you have not already done so and you want to secure you a copy of my book, 
do so by going to www.lovemeorhateme.org. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I will be back next Tuesday. That will be the last podcast for 2018. I will not do one the last week of, of 2018 um, due to, you know, the hot holidays, you know, Christmas, Kwanzaa, etc. But as always, remember in life, you have two choices. You can make moves or you can make excuses, but you most certainly cannot do both. It's yours truly, Arian Tyson, the moving motivator. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you next Tuesday, next Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 8.30 p.m. Central for another episode of the Motivation to Elevation Facebook Live podcast. Peace.